Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time zone it is, whether you in the world, it is your law and saviour. And yeah, Chronicles of Darkness is pretty much dead. You know, the whole fucking cushion over the face thing while it's sleeping, suffocated slowly to death by our friends in Stockholm. Now, what the fuck am I going on about and where are my sources for this? Well, Chronicles of Darkness, for anybody who's unaware, was originally the new World of Darkness that spawned out of the original end of the World of Darkness line. So when the whole end of world scenarios of the various different game lines came about, we had the new World of Darkness that spawned the likes of Vampire the Requiem, Where of the Forsaken, the very popular change in the Lost, Mage the Awakening, etc. and so forth. The latest of which came out a couple of years ago, called Deviant the Renegade, and I actually did a review of that some time ago, which you can go and check out via a car that's going to appear right now. And anybody who's been following the World of Darkness development for some time will know that there hasn't been a lot of Chronicles of Darkness games for some time now. In fact, various authors have been saying that Chronicles of Darkness material hasn't been improved by Paradox for some time now, or rather they're just flat out not accepting any new requests for official material. In fact, here's a uh, tweet that Matthew Dawkins uh, said recently, which is, um, I don't know if you need any more further confirmation than that, then uh, I guess um, you might need some help. But I suppose that's why we're here, really. Like, sure, this is coming from one of the authors who have Chronicles of Dark materials, but it's not exactly from the mouth of World of Darkness itself, because Matthew Dawkins doesn't work for World of Darkness. Well, not in the sense that he's a writer for them, like an in-house author. Freelance has been hired, sure, but Matthew is with Onyx Path Publishing, who did all the writing for, uh, well, well, most of the writing for Chronicles of Darkness, shall we say, when that was handed over from White Wolf Publishing. But what about people from Paradox and Slash or World of Darkness itself? Well, that's why we're actually here, because in the Latter dates of last month, that month being July 2024, in the year of our Lord Telos, there was a gaming convention in Finland, given by Johanna or Johanna Peterson, and I've got those names wrong, I do sincerely apologise, but we're going to get a lot of pronunciations and things wrong here, where Johanna, Johanna, uh, gave a talk about the development of World of Darkness within the 5th edition sphere, and it also talked about some upcoming ideas and ventures as well, and this thing does exist. Here's a screenshot of a said convention that happened. Now, somebody who supposedly attended said convention and said talk, I should say the talk within the convention, was able to tell me what was said, in the, I guess in this exclusive coverage, because I haven't seen anybody else uh, dissect and talk about what's going on there. Now, to that end, because there isn't like any note form or written article or video that showcased exactly what was discussed, we're going to have to take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt. So, if you want to stop watching this now, that's absolutely fine. But I think you may want to stick around for this because there's some rather harrowing details about the development of future World of Darkness materials that really need to be addressed. So let's talk about what we already know. Well, the first things first is that the Sabat and the SI were very much developed for, to be villains in a digital sense was the exact wording uh, that the poster used, which I think is a particularly interesting choice because digital, are they wanting to do what Wizards of the Coast are doing and move all their books to be digital online, like PDF and like Demiplane and those sorts of things? in the new future, or are they wanting to invest more in uh, World of Darkness and Vampire being video games only, which would kind of make sense given that Paradox is a video game company, but given the amount of layoffs that Paradox are doing at the moment within their own field and cancelling other games, and they have a bit of a track record of cancelling more than they actually put out, kind of like a whole Warner Brothers sort of thing, that doesn't particularly put any future project that do into any positive light. Specifically, Bloodlines 2, which we've uh, talked about before already. The second thing that we know about is the development of Wealth the Apocalypse 5th Edition, which is very clearly uh, a remake, not a continuation. Now, anybody who's read the core book would know this because it said this on the very first page of the very first chapter. So this shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody. But for those who did, well, there you go. It's now uh, written out there in white and blue, as it were. Now, the other bit that I want to focus on here is a rather interesting bit for the purposes of this discussion on talking about uh, it being very human focused because, of course, it's fifth edition, so why wouldn't it be? But it's the wording of like rather than 
uh, guru in their Krynos form, like Kumbaya in with spirits and the umbra, to use the actual wording here. Now, I don't know whether that's something that the poster worded in such a fashion just to garner a reaction out of me, which, to be fair, it's worked. <laughs> Or it could be just a representation of what was actually discussed at said convention, which is possible given that we know that the 5th edition was developed by people who really didn't like Wealth or didn't understand it properly. So, and the, in the material, there's obviously the more distance from the Umbra. It's not a given right that people can sidestep into it. You have to use a certain right for it. And despite certain materials trying to put a focus on communion with spirits, it really does not put much focus on communion with spirits which is annoying. And again, it just proves that World of Darkness really don't know what to do with 5th edition, Werewolf specifically. You could argue they don't know what to do with anything that they're doing, particularly Vampire and Hunter the Reckoning, both of which taking direct inspiration from their Chronicles of Darkness counterparts. You've got Touchstones and Blood Renaissances and all the other things that it borrows from Requiem. But Blood Renaissance isn't a thing from that, actually. Uh, you also have Hunt of the Reckoning just being essentially Hunt of the Vigil Light. And it turns out that wasn't coincidence either. That Chronicles of Darkness wasn't seen as a separate entity, but rather it was seen as something, oh, we can use this for source material and develop it side by side sort of thing. Which isn't fantastic because it just confirms the a lack of better phrase, the sheer fucking laziness of it. Oh, these games have much better ideas with what we're doing at the moment, so let's pinch and borrow those ideas and try and make 5th edition better. However, it doesn't particularly spell positive futures for Chronicles of Darkness, as it seems that further 5th edition products are going to be using Ch uh, Chronicles of Darkness a lot more. So, for example, if they were to do a 5th edition update for changing the dreaming, that would probably be more like changing the lost, sort of, which wouldn't please changing the dreaming fans because it's not like changing the lost and vice versa. So that just seems a bit weird to me. But it also means that we're probably not going to be getting any brand new Chronicles of Darkness books for some time, if at all. This is such a shame because Onyx Path, who have done the writing for Chronicles of Darkness, um, I mean, it's they, they have all these awesome writing capabilities but they're not being put to good use here and sure there have been some newer books but they've been more in the veins of like kickstarter like reward obligations that they're putting out which is so frustrating to see because there is a demand for chronicles of darkness you go onto the storyteller's vault whenever one of these newer Chronicles of Darkness books have dropped they go straight to the charts immediately like number one spot as well as any like actual community content that goes straight up there on the storytellers vault as well so people do want it it's just paradox are just not keen to have that which is super frustrating so you've got this writing talent at onyx path publishing right and you want to support them well the two ways you can do that first of all you can go and buy their books because they don't just do chronicle darkness stuff they'd have the came from series uh, as i said they've got chronicles of darkness so if you go and purchase those Chronicles of Darkness books and like leave a review and a comment saying that you like it and you enjoy the systems, it might convince Paradox to pull their heads out of their own fucking asses and have a look at what people are into and actually gear what they're writing towards that a bit more. I'll even go a step for you and like put down the core books to each of the second editions Chronicles of Darkness tomes in the description below. Of course, if you purchase them with those links, I get some of the money back so I can continue to do content like this. But there is another option, because uh, Onyx Path are working on a brand new game that you may have heard about called Curseborn. Now, let's talk about that because there are some really exciting things coming in that game. Curseborn is quite literally what happens when you have classic White Wolf and World of Darkness authors who are unable to do the things that the very company was set up to do, because Onyx Path Publishing was set up to basically write and publish like World of Darkness material from the 20th Anniversary Edition line onwards. Um, they didn't do Vampire the Masquerade's 20th Anniversary Edition, that was White Wolf, but practically everything else thereafter they wrote, developed, and published. And 
It is basically a very polite fuck you if you're not going to let us do the stuff that we want to do. Like take the ideas that we have for World of Darkness, plus some ideas of our own, and we're going to put them into our own game. And this isn't me trying to drum up hype or like to paint Paradox in a bad light, because quite frankly, there are much more effective ways of me doing that. And Paradox of that matter, actually. But um, this is comes from the words of Rich Thomas himself, who's like the CEO, big cheese of... Um, Onyx Path, who with White Wolf was like creative art director and, and artist as well. I can't quite remember the exact credentials, but he was like one of the founders of White Wolf Publishing. And there's a whole convention talk that I'm drawing a lot of this information from, which you can find in the description below. It is very interesting and very engaging. Like it was with Rich Thomas, Eddie Webb, Matthew Dawkins, Dixie Crocken, and there was somebody else who I believe they are like the main developer for Curseborn, and I'm really sorry that I've forgotten your name. Um but yeah, it's really interesting what they're doing with Curseborn. Yes, it's all to do with like supernaturals, like ghosts, werewolves, and vampires. It's all these different splats, supernaturals in one book. And they're all cursed, born with curses that come from members of their families that have made pacts with some sort of entities. And now you play the ones who have to live from the bearers of said curse. Sure, you get a load of powers with it, but you also get a load of flaws with it too. And it's really set up in a way that you're kind of fighting against the resistance and living with what you were born with. And there's whole themes of found family within this world, which is a queer person I absolutely adore. And if anybody says that this is another woke product by a woke company and that bothers you, you've never been a fan of World of Darkness if you haven't made those connections yourself or you just have a really small fucking brain. But those themes have found themselves in horror all the time. Horror is always been incredibly political and it's quite frankly always been very queer so but there's a lots of really interesting ideas that it has there as well um it takes a lot of inspiration from michael flanagan's um way of horror so the four of house of usher um midnight mass and a load of other things that he's done as well like some really key inspiration for uh curseborn and I can't actually remember everything that was discussed because it was like a month ago when I watched this. So again, check out that convention thing in the description below. It's up on YouTube. If you like the World of Darkness stuff that they did and the Chronicles of Darkness stuff that Onyx Path did as well, Curseborn is going to be the game for you. It uses the Story Path Ultra system, so basically eight and ups. Uh, you're going to be a successes. Dice explode, and it's a much simpler system in some areas as well, how combat works and everything. There's really cool artwork, and there's going to be some really interesting mechanics there as well, which you can look at right now because they have their quick start on the uh, drive through RPG, uh, the Curseborn Ashcan, I believe it's called, which you can go and purchase as a PDF and or uh, print-on-demand thing for you to use as well. as a uh, free brochure thing, PDF, that you can download as well. And the kickstart of that is coming out at the end of this year, which I will definitely be backing. I haven't done a lot of kickstart things before because there's always that element of, oh, what, they never put out anything. And I'm always prepared to wait um, for things to go up on drive through RPG and support products that I like. But quite frankly, I'm making an effort with this to purchase, like, a physical copy from... Uh, their Kickstarter or backer kit or whatever it is they're going to be doing with that because I really want them to do well with this. They've said that they want this to be like a proper franchise that goes on for many, many different years. It doesn't have an evolving meta plot. It does have lore and there is a difference between the two of them because Vampire the Masquerade and World of Darkness does have like an evolving meta plot. Like events happen throughout the time, throughout the current day that pushes the heavy females forward. Whereas it has, where with um, Curseborn, it has lore where things have happened. But you are very much free to do if you want to interpret that how you wish. It's not like bigger, more famous individuals are calling the shots. So you don't have like a Theo Bell, Hardestat, Lucita, you know, sort of figures like doing the stuff in the now. Shit has happened and it's you, the players, that are pushing stuff forward. And they won't, from my understanding, they're not going to be putting out books that add to a meta plot, just different ideas and horror ideas that you can like. Um, pull into your games, which is a really sensible idea, to be honest, because if it becomes too similar like World of Darkness, there's just the element of, just purchase the old stuff, why would you want to do that? But Curse Bomb does set up to be like a really interesting take on horror TTRPGs, and quite frankly, with the queer and diverse cast that Onyx Path have, with their experience in writing horror, like, I have no doubt that this is going to be a fucking smash hit, and the little teasers they put through so far, and some of the artwork they've shown case, like using some of their old classic, it appears that we've got some Michael Gaydos. I think we've got some Amy Wilkins in there as well. So really classic Onyx Path stuff, and they want to have new artists in there as well. 
they are not using anybody who is currently working uh, with World of Darkness, which I don't know how much of a negative thing that is. Like, oh, you're working World of Darkness, you. Like, obviously, it's not that level of childishness, but clearly, they want it to look a like an Onyx Path product, but also want to give uh, Cursedborn its own identity, so people don't think, oh, that just looks like World of Darkness. It's a World of Darkness clone. Sure, them, them being able not being able to write World of Darkness material has very much inspired all of this. But it's not a case of, we're going to make a World of Darkness clone. That's not what Cursebone appears to be. And as I said, I find that really, really exciting. If you love Onyx Path and love the horror that they do, you should fucking well support them everywhere that you can. As I said, buy the Chronicles of Darkness stuff, because it may make Pyrex Docs aware that, oh, people really do like Chronicles of Darkness, but what it is, it's not World of Darkness. And, like, support them that way, because... Obviously, that obviously helps pays the publishers and the authors and whatever. You can go and support them when Curseborn comes out. I will be letting know when that Kickstarter goes live via Kickstarter back a kit or where it was they're going to be doing because they've been like sh like swapping up between this and that recently, which is pretty neat. And by the way, this isn't paid sponsored content. Like they haven't asked me to do this. This is just me. Honestly, when I saw that thing regarding uh, that convention on Blue Sky, the screenshots you've been seeing throughout this. I just felt the need just to talk about this, to be honest, because I think Onyx Path do need a bit more love. Sure, they've got a lot of shit wrong in the past, and I've called them out on that. With various their products, and unlike World of Darkness and Paradox, they actually take in criticism, which is fucking incredible. And I, funny, that's something that I have to celebrate in this day and age, that, you know, we can't just all take in criticism, like, as mature adults, providing it's presented in a mature fashion, it's not just being, like, childish, childish behaviour. But... And rambling aside, uh, so we end on a positive note here, I want you to tell me your favourite Chronicles of Darkness uh, games and books, and we're going to start a whole Chronicles of Darkness appreciation thread in the description below. Uh, go and check out the core books I left in the description as well. I'm also going to leave links to those Curseborn items as well. And again, if you purchase them with those links, I get some of the money back because I'm an affiliate on Drive Through RPG, so I'm able to cover... Uh, like exclusive things like this and give you the lore dives and whatnot. Also, I probably am going to be spending quite a bit of money on the Curseborn items, so I, I'm i gonna need some financial backing there, and anything that you can put towards that by supporting my own homebrew and purchasing with those affiliate links will definitely help out in the long run. But that aside, like, subscribe, to share if you can't do any of that. Uh, all of that helps in its own way as well. And I will see you on the next upload, whatever that may well be for you. And until next time, farewell.